Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we're here with something a little bit different. Yes, version 1.10 has finally released on F124 and although it might not fix everything I think we're all hoping for, yes, I'm looking at you, equal cars on online and the handling and the way the AI race against each other and a whole litany of other things, it does include one thing that I am very, very excited for. As you can probably tell by the title of this video, today we are going to be jumping in with our first drive of the all-new F2 2024 cars. Now, anybody uh, that has been around our channel for quite a while will know that I do generally love uh, racing with the F2 cars inside the Formula 1 games. I've done a series every single year uh, with them since they originally came out back in like F1 2020. I want to say it might have been even earlier than that. Uh, and that is going to be continuing this year as well. I'm going to have a poll over on the community tab uh, going live already, actually, uh, by the time this video is going out. The options for who we're going to be racing with this season are going to be Ollie Behrman, Kimi Antonelli, Gabriel Bortoletto, or... I'm going to put Isaac Hadjar in there. Not that I think he'll win, but obviously he is also in the championship fight IRL this season. So yeah, let me know who you want to see me do a full F2 2024 season racing as as well. Like I said, there'll already be a poll over on the community tab. But yeah, today we're just going to jump in, take a look as to what the F2 cars are like, give them a little bit of a go and kind of see as to how we get on as... What on earth is this? Instantly then, as we head out in the car, first thing I'm noticing is the steering wheel looks very, very peculiar. Not sure uh, whether that is something just exclusive to this Van Amersfoort car or what that's all about. I um, mean, yeah, that certainly doesn't look like kind of a normal F2 steering wheel or anything. If anything, it looks like when you accidentally mod the game not very well and kind of, yeah, you, you're steering and a few other graphic options uh, inside the car is a little bit broken. But yeah, I thought we'd do a couple laps uh, here at Monaco with the cockpit camera. Small little thing, but nice to see the mirrors actually line up quite nicely so you can actually see uh, what is behind you as well. Of course, normally, as has been an issue with the F1 games for years now, uh, the the uh, side camera, the side mirrors, sorry, uh, are completely out of view unless you're running like on an ultra wide monitor or something like that, which is one of the big reasons why I've never done more cockpit cam racing inside these games as well. Now, obviously, I remember at the start of 2024 as well, whoa, when these new F2 cars did initially launch, people always said they sound really weird. I quite like them. I like kind of the turbo whistle and things like that you get from them. Now, I believe they are using the same V6 engines that obviously the older generation of car used as well. I don't believe Mechachrome have changed the Marine too much, uh, but just obviously due to kind of the way the new cars are shaped and things like that, and the exhaust and things like that. You do get more sound from the turbo. Uh, you can obviously hear it spool and whistle and things like that, uh, which I think is really cool. Uh, but I understand, yeah, a lot of people don't really like it. You don't kind of get all of that inside the game, uh, but they do still sound pretty cool as well. And yeah, I mean, obviously with the new grand effects cars and things like that, they, they, they've led to some controversial racing this year. It's safe to say, you know, Mechachrome maybe haven't kept the series as even as people were kind of hoping they would. Uh, you know, there's all kind of talks, isn't there, about, you know, certain drivers having more powerful engines than others, uh, as I've gone and completely Austin-powered myself. Anyway, let's try and look past that little moment there for myself. You know, to, to find the limit, sometimes you've got to push the limit in these FI Formula 2 cars. And yeah, I must admit as well, if you haven't watched Formula 2 in 2024, I say it every year, try and watch it. The, the, the series is generally more entertaining than Formula 1. And that's saying something with just how good Formula 1 races have been in recent times. F2 is just chaos. Uh, and it's really, really fun as well. You know, it is entertaining, especially, you know, when you do see, you know, what is quite clearly going to be the next big name uh, in Formula 1 as well, uh, which is always quite cool. Obviously, like I said, this year, you know, all the hype is kind of around Behrman uh, and Antonelli in a championship fight. That that hasn't quite happened, but reigning F3 champion Gabriel Bortoletto as well uh, has done a very, very good job over the campaign. But yeah, I mean, you, you can hear a little bit of the turbo there as well. Obviously, these things are equipped with the DRS, which you can see uh, working as well down the front straight here in Monte Carlo. Um, but yeah, I'm going to dive in then with a different car. 
We'll do like a 35% race. I think today we're going to head to Spa. Well, quickly before we go into the race as well, then you can take a quick look at the entire grid. A little bit awkward immediately. Yeah, Zach O'Sullivan, of course, is no longer in FI Formula 2. There's Behrman uh, and Kimi Antonelli, who's... I don't know what he's done, uh, but he's looking slightly worse for wet. Zane Maloney uh, and Rotoma Miata. I think we're going to do the races Miata, because uh, I do quite like him as well there. Jack Crawford uh, and Juan Manuel Correa. Then we've obviously got, yeah, Kush Miney, uh, and there we go, Gabriel Bortoletto. Uh, MP Motorsport obviously still got Dennis Hauger. I'm staggered he's still within the team. And then, of course, Franco Colapinto uh, as Williams' newest F1 driver, who did a very good job, it must be said as well, in Baku. Fittipaldi and Rafael Villagomez. Then we've got Amory Cordiel and Paul Aaron. Of course, yeah, the kind of the big star of the first half of this season. And then it's kind of fallen apart. Isaac Hadjar there in his Campos alongside uh, Pepe Marti. And then, yeah, right down towards the rear of the field. Richard Vashaw, he's still kicking around in Formula 2. Roman Stanek. And then last but not least, we've got Joshua Dirksen and Taylor Barnard, who, of course, yeah, is no longer racing uh, in the series either. That is one problem that coders in EA seem to find, is you scan all the drivers, especially in Formula 2, uh, and often before the end of the year, it's already changed quite a lot. Let's do this thing, though. Rotoma Miata, like I said, here at the Belgian Grand Prix. Obviously, unlike the Formula 1 cars as well, you have got a few different options uh, for setting up the F2 cars. Although, yeah, some of those things obviously are quite limited. For those of you that don't know, uh, in Formula 2, obviously, the cars are technically a spec series. Uh, but, yeah, teams like Prima generally are kind of considered to be the best ones at setting up the car technically uh, for the drivers as well. So, although, yeah, you wonder how on earth does the same team usually win each year, uh, year in, year out. Yeah, it's normally because teams like Prima have got the best personnel as well. I am going to be starting this one uh, at the rear of the field. I've got no idea whether the tweaks I've made to the setup are going to make the car better or worse. Uh, but yeah, we will stay with Rotomo as we make our way into this qualifying lap. And it does seem like all the steering wheels uh, are the same as each other. So... I don't know whether that's a design choice. I don't believe that's kind of how the F2 steering wheels look this year uh, from the races I've kind of watched in F5 Formula 2. Well, that seems to be, yeah, at least it wasn't like a one-time glitch I've seen with one of the drivers. It might well be a glitch with all of them uh, because, well, F124, need I say any more. Car, though, feels fairly quick up the straight. Of course, the AI will pretty much all use the identical setups uh, as well to each other. Now, braking points are going to be a little bit bigger than what you find in Formula 1. But, yeah, with the new ground effect cars as well, hopefully, yeah, we're going to be able to try and carry extra speed through the corners. I know I've driven the old Formula 2 cars once on this year's game, and they were honestly terrible. Uh, I was tempted to do an F2 series with the older generation of car as well, but, yeah, they, they handle really, really oddly, uh, and kind of, you were fine, you were fine, and then you were spinning out of them. So that's kind of why, obviously, I waited and held off until these new cars have come. And they, these do make a lot more sense. You know, they work with the kind of new handling model and things like that inside F124 as well. Which, you know, is not perfect, but is certainly, yeah, getting there slowly but surely as well. I believe they are still making some under-the-hood tweaks as well uh, with the game's handling model and everything like that. As we are still in last place here, yet less than a second away from Kimi Antonelli, who was rocked up to the front of the order. Of course, Mercedes, our Formula 1 driver next season as well. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like the field is very, very tightly bunched. Uh, but, yeah, we are going to be starting from the rear of the field uh, either way there. So, just got to be careful through the final couple of corners. Oh, there we go. So, you can still clearly get that little bit of a snap out of the car as well if you try and overstep the mark. They're good. And then when you hit kind of the grip limit, they absolutely will bite you. Located in the Ardennes countryside, Spa has been hosting races for almost a century and it's revered by drivers and fans alike. So it's a joy to be here today as we prepare for the next thrilling instalment of the Formula 2 race calendar. So here we are again, a whopping 3.5 miles of track here at Spa, featuring long straights, some seriously fast corners and some massive elevation changes. This is a track that routinely delivers high quality racing and we'll be hoping to see just that from our young F2 drivers today. Here are the starting positions for today's race. Andrea Kimi Antonelli lines up on pole position. 
and it's Dennis Hauger in P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Behrman, Martins, Paul Aaron, Fittipaldi, Hadjar, Miney, Cordiel, Franco Colapinto, Gashaw, Zach O'Sullivan, Taylor Barnard, Maloney, Bortoletto, Correa, Roman Stanek, Pepe Marti, Crawford, Villa Gomez, Ritomo Miata. And now it's time to head down to the track. It is the Formula 2 race. It is time to introduce you to Alex Brundle. I'm Alex Jakes, and we've got changeable weather out there today. That's making for some nervous team personnel down in the paddock, down in the pit lane. Well, uncertainty is what strategy is all about, but it absolves the teams from the responsibility of running both compounds of tyre. They might have to use that wet tyre, of course. And then the question is, where do those crossovers lie between the wet and dry conditions? Back of the grid, not great, I know, but let's just try and use the first lap to push your way up the order. Well, I must admit, I didn't know exactly what I was getting myself into, but it doesn't look like rain is going to be a concern in this GP either. They have got one thing right, though. Rafael Villagomez is very terrible, uh, as he has been throughout most of 2024, because when you finish in a lower than 20th in Formula 3, why do you think you should move up into Formula 2? Cash money, that is why. But yeah, obviously... A couple of the drivers look very, very cursed on the grid run now. Uh, Zach O'Sullivan, probably my personal favourite there. Five red lights though on the grid. And it's going to be lights out and away we go. Now, obviously, Formula 2 cars, uh, they don't have anti stalls So, as has always been the case inside the F1 game, because it can't really simulate clutch control very well, um, your best method is basically just boot the throttle um, and try to hang on to it there, as clearly getting a little bit too aggressive off of turn one. I don't know if I turned damage on or not for this race, to be completely honest. Uh, so maybe we were lucky there to get away with that contact with Pepe Marti. Maybe just these cars are built like, I don't know, brick walls or something like that. But you can see everybody making their way up through Eau Rouge and Rally on fairly cool karma collected on this opening lap. Uh, yeah, I think for us, though, it's, it's going to be interesting to see just how many places we can make up as the race goes on. We are up against Ultimate AI, uh, so, you know, they should still be fairly quick. Um, as, yeah, we try and make our way around the outside of Pepe Marti on this opening lap, though. But hopefully, yeah, we can try and just get up to speed in these cars as well, of course. We're doing a 35% race, uh, but that is a 35% race of Formula 2 length. So, yeah, all of the F2 races, obviously, because the cars are slower, uh, they are shorter races. So, a sprint race, I believe, is what would normally be a bank. 25-30% of a Formula 1 Grand Prix, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then, yeah, a, a sort of a normal feature race in Formula 2 is about 60% of a normal of a normal Formula 1 Grand Prix. So if I was to do, like, a 100% series with these cars, I won't be. I'll be doing 50% races. Um, but, yeah, it would be, like, a 60% or just longer than a 50% normal career mode race that we do on the channel. So that should hopefully give you an indication... Obviously, how long kind of Formula 2 races are, of course. This one is a one-third distance feature race, so only nine laps here, which is obviously, yeah, less than a 25% Formula 1 race around this venue. There is Zane Maloney trying to have a look around the outside, or down the inside, sorry, Gabriel Bortoletto. And I tell you what, these cars, off of that final corner, you've just got no feel over what they're doing at the rear. None at all. There's team already here talking about the tyre strategy. It does feel very odd. Uh, to have to change tyres during a nine-lap race. Would have been even weirder uh, if we'd done, like, a 25% race or something like that. But often, you know, it, it does lead to some crazy racing as well because, you know, the, the undercut is, can be really powerful in Formula 2, depending on where they're racing and things like that. Um, you can actually pit inside the opening six laps of a real Grand Prix in F2 as we're about to go three wide down the Kemmel Straight. Has it taken us long before that happens? So we'll get a little bit of a squeeze there. Oh, a bit of a moment over the grass and we'll kind of squeeze both of Marty and Crawford out there. We kind of got turned in on. We straightened up the car a bit more than I really wanted. But, yeah, hopefully, again, no damage done to our car. And that's kind of the most important bit for us at the moment. Because we need to try and keep up uh, after I slag Rafael Villagomez off at the start of this one. We do need to try and keep up with him and make sure we beat the VAR driver as well. Now, I'll be honest... I'm gutted 
absolutely gutted with this update that we don't get F2's newest star uh, in Niels Kulin inside the game. Now, I'm pretty certain what coders do, and or EA, and I couldn't tell you this as 100% fact, but I'm pretty certain either at Silverstone or in one of the other early European legs of the campaign, they will basically go through and scan the entire grid's worth of drivers at that race. Uh, I, would, I would assume it is normally Silverstone because, of course, it's closest to home. You know, they don't have to take all of their face scanning technology and things like that uh, out to another country. Uh, so, obviously, they are kind of limited. You know, F2, it's, you know, it's not the biggest feature in the game. You know, a lot of people don't really care about it. I really do love it. Um, but I understand, obviously, for a lot of people, they aren't really too interested in it. So let's wait and see. I mean, yeah, through that final chicane there, this thing is a real handful. Um, but obviously, yeah, it does mean that, sadly, I'm not expecting us to kind of get a lineup change or anything like that. Um, I'd be intrigued to see, obviously, whether they do put Colapinto into the F1 seat. Um, but then, obviously, I would assume he would also then be in the F2 car as well. They, I don't think ever have they kind of updated it after they kind of give you like the first version uh, of whatever f2 grid they were able to scan because it does change quite often and they don't really tend to change it uh after that as well which is a little bit of a shame but you know i can understand it you know as we moaned about them kind of wasting resources on f1 world and things like that um yeah i can understand obviously for a lot of people you know wasting a load of time trying to scan one new f2 driver that's going to be there for three rounds can be irrelevant and things like that Yes, again, I am looking uh, at Niels Coolen. But yeah, these things, I'll be honest, as they kind of should, handle a bit like baby Formula 1 cars. Like I said, you've got to be a little bit earlier on the brakes. Obviously, you can't carry as much speed through the corners. They have got good levels of downforce, though. They feel like they're working quite nicely. I can still see yeah, trying to make sure that we get the line through Puon nice and tidy, but still struggling just to kind of work out what we need to be doing through there. But... Yeah, that being said, they are pretty good fun as well, apart from the bus stop chicane. They do feel kind of loose for the sake of feeling loose rather than kind of making sense with how I would expect them to handle as well there. But we seem to be having a good battle uh, with Marty as well. You don't seem to obviously lose much in the dirty air of the car in front. Not that that's ever really been an issue uh, inside the F1 games either. So it is working quite nicely now. I don't think the undercut is going to be very powerful in this race. The slipstream certainly is, though. So we're going to try and look around the outside of Pepe Marti once again. Hopefully we'll be able to get the car stopped or down the inside there. A little bit of contact, and then you've just got to be so careful trying to put the power down on the exit of the corner. Obviously, they will find the grip quite easily. And we'll wait and see, kind of, see whether the AI lose much time uh, in the pit lane as well there. But obviously, yeah, in a season like this, it's kind of been difficult, I would have imagined, to kind of put kind of performance on each of the drivers as well. Because, I mean, we've had over a dozen race winners in Formula 2 this year. It has been absolutely ridiculous, the amount of different drivers that have gotten to the top step of the podium. Uh, my favourite still, and it might be because he's local to me, uh, was got to be Jack Crawford's win at Monaco, where he basically stayed out all race. And then there was a safety car right at the end, uh, which allowed him to basically claim a free pit stop and win on the most famous of streets. Didn't help him keep his seat, though, uh, for the rest of the year. But yeah, Formula 2 in 2024 has just been an utterly ridiculous campaign as well. And it has been a brilliant fun to watch as well. Obviously, we've got still a few rounds to go. Uh, I believe, yeah, Qatar, uh, Abu Dhabi, and I want to say one more, uh, but I, I couldn't quite remember exactly where it's gonna be it might only be those two actually now i say that i think yeah obviously now we're kind of really into the flyaway season kind of difficult to ship out formula 2 cars uh, to all corners of the globe but yeah you know i i think honestly at this point i think it's going to be gabriella bortoletto uh, that takes the crown uh, and then i think you know might end up with that salva seat for next year As Mark warned me, yeah, just obviously about the pit lane speed limit line. Uh, I think as well, all pit lanes in Formula 2 are just 37 miles an hour. So we are going to have to be careful of that as we make our way in. As Marty again seems to be lifting out up through Blanchemont ever so slightly. I know we've obviously got good straight line speed in the car. But I wasn't expecting to gain that much on him there. As we'll go down the inside before we make our way into the pit lane. 
And yeah, there you go. You can see it is 37. So don't let that catch you out. I'm sure it will at some point for me inside this game as well as Behrman in that Prima. Really has been screwed over quite a bit in the pit lane. Of course, yeah, chaos. And you've got much less crew to do your pit stops as well in Formula 2. So, yeah, pit stops in Formula 2 are usually somewhere kind of between like 4 and 5 seconds rather than 2 and 3 uh, inside Formula 1 as well. As so I think we've taken a little bit of time out of Villa Gomez there. We just need kind of some clear track space and not end up battling... Uh, with Pepe Marti too much throughout the second half of this race as well. But yeah, tyre warm-up uh, can be something very, very difficult as well to do in Formula 2. They don't have tyre blankets or anything like that, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, it does, you know, it makes the series a bit more unpredictable. Kind of obviously, you know, it's there to train drivers to kind of get them ready for Formula 1. And kind of one of the best ways you can do that is by kind of, you know, getting them out of their comfort zone, making life a bit more difficult for them and things like that. Um, but yeah, you know, it, you kind of, you, you'd hope the cream does rise to the top at the end of the day. And well, 2024 uh, has often showcased that not necessarily that is the case. Either that or, you know, the grid this year has got to be the most insane I think we've ever seen as well inside FIA Formula 2. But yeah, just getting more and more laps though under my belt. This thing is, you know, very, very fun for the most part. You know, like I said, I'm still, still struggling to work out the line. Uh, through the final couple of corners. I feel like my grandmother uh, could drive through there quicker than I seemingly am able to right now. But hopefully, yeah, once the rest of the AI come in, uh, maybe we'll have got a bit of an undercut if they kind of trip over each other. Maybe a couple of drivers have had bad stops as well. As it feels like, yeah, in the T-cam, you can kind of hear that turbo spool a whole lot more. Z Maloney, yeah, of course, won both races out in Bahrain. At the start of the year, but hasn't really had a campaign to remember since then. Uh, our teammate, of course, for this race only. Um, but yeah, I, I, yeah, like I said, these these cars, the turbo spool definitely seems to be more noticeable uh, when you're in the T cam position, uh, rather than cockpit. As yeah, I just cannot, for the life of me, figure out what line to do through that final chicane. I think um, what we'll do, I'm going to do a very cheeky rewind because I still want to try and see if we can battle it out. Uh, with Villa Gomez by the end of this one. So get your bottle job 212 emojis uh, into the comment section as well. There, as you can see, Jack Crawford then making his way out of the pit lane. Of course, he was right in the rear of the field. There is Zane Maloney. Yeah, definitely need to do something. I mean, what is that? They, they definitely. I said, obviously, I did like three races in the, F, the old F2 cars. These things definitely still seem to handle a bit like that. They're a bit of a light switch. Oh, has we got Zach O'Sullivan gone? Not too sure what's happened to him. Must have span on his way out of pit exit there. Um, may maybe me rewinding has kind of broken that one for him. But, yeah, it's... They kind of just... Yeah, they, they're, they're either fine, they're fine, they're fine, they're gone. Which is a little bit frustrating still. Because, uh, yeah, it just can make the driving a little bit unpredictable. Especially when it kind of doesn't make sense. Is where I struggle with it. Is once again... Uh, Pepe Marti seems to be the man that we're battling with throughout a lot of the afternoon. Seems, yeah, I think it is just the slipstream is incredibly powerful because we seem to be able to get the run on him when we're kind of tucked up. Obviously, he had the DRS there, so as you expect, should be able to make the move on us uh, down the Kemmel Strait as well. But, yeah, could we still beat our teammate Zane Maloney there? They're having a, quite a good battle uh, just up in front, so I think we need to work with Marti uh, over the next couple of laps there. Maybe he can try and drag me along towards the end of this race but of course in a 35% GP we haven't got that much time to you know really sort of get on with it either there which can be a little bit awkward now I remember as well at the start of the year um, I did like an F2 2024 predictions I'm, I'm gonna go back and react to that at the end of the campaign and kind of see just how wrong I was over the course of the season because yeah I don't think any of us are expecting it to be as wild it has been and I think more importantly than that, I don't think anybody expected both Primas to struggle as much as they have. Really does feel like the Italian team just has not figured out the cars in 2024. And they might need another year, obviously, with a completely fresh lineup to kind of get everything sussed out as well as to saw what Marty's is doing there. Maybe Sergio Perez, Carlos Sainz kind of meeting uh, in the middle there. Is first gear going to be the better one to go with? It still feels... Very kind of on a knife edge there, but you can rev the car out 
off the corner as well. So we are going to be side by side, back down in towards turn one. I think we're going to try and be a little bit cheeky there and maybe clean the DRS uh, from, I believe he's Spanish, isn't he, Pepe Marti? I've got to go through and learn all the nationalities again. Some of them I can remember, some of them I can't so much. There is, yeah, Maloney, three seconds up the road. So we do need to see more battles between him and those other cars there. It's, yeah, they're definitely... I don't know if they're running a lower downforce setup or what's going on, but the AI lack confidence uh, down through the high, kind of the high speed corners as well, and things like that around this lap. As once again, we'll go around the outside of Marty. So I think, yeah, the AI are running quite low downforce setups around this circuit. And that would explain, yeah, why they're so quick up at the top of the hill that maybe they seemingly struggling through some other parts of the venue. But of course, yeah, figuring out the setups and everything like that. It does take a little bit of time with these cars. It feels like I need either more ride height or something more uh, through the low-speed corners. I mean, he's getting very overcast here in Belgium, but that isn't going to affect us uh, in this race either, which is, you know, potentially a little bit of a shame. You don't get intermediate tyres, though, uh, in Formula 2, so it's dries or wets, which can be a little bit awkward, of course, if you are in changeable conditions and things like that. And yeah, it does mean the switch over is even more critical in Formula 2 as well, especially, like I said, obviously you haven't got as much time uh, in the races to kind of recover from a mistake or something like that as well there. But, you know, watching our team out of the road, the road in really have not had the race of it this afternoon. Both drivers right the way down the rear of the order. So, but I'm, I'm hoping we kind of see, you know, they, there's still a big train of cars up there. But when we kind of see more battles towards the end of this is... Is that going to work for us? Uh, a little bit of curb on the way in. Got to try and be sensitive with the throttle on the way out. But it seems to be better. We set a new personal best as well. Which I guess is good news. And we are, yeah, just starting to close in a little bit more on some of the other cars. But yeah, you can't you can keep the turbo spooled through the corner, it feels like. Otherwise, you're just on the exit going to be met with a load of wheel spin. And that is really, really difficult to try and manage as well. There is, I think, once again, Marty... He's going to be able to get the run. I mean, we still seem to be pulling away from Crawford and O'Sullivan, though, at the rear of the field. So I'm not too sure what to make of that one, then. So we might try and defend. Oh, no, Marty's got way too much speed there. That we can really do anything against. We'll try and go late on the brakes around the outside at the top of the hill. Just kind of get a little bit squeezed out on the exit there. But I don't think we were ever going to have the space anyway, which is a little bit of a shame there. So, yeah, a little bit gutting. Now that it doesn't look like we're really going to be able to get in the fight at the front of the order as well. But, you know, this race is more just about learning the cars, kind of, you know, giving you guys an idea as well as to whether you should drive them inside the game. Now, I would always give Codemasters credit as well, uh, mainly because I don't think many people at all would buy it otherwise. This is always a free update to the game, which I think is good, you know, and I get, obviously, for a lot of people, you know, people aren't going to be that excited to drive these cars. You know, for a lot of people, it doesn't really make much difference. But I always do find it is something to look forward to inside the game. You know, I've always enjoyed doing our F2 career modes and things like that. Something that like Richard Vashore has basically been in since the beginning. Uh, which is slightly alarming. But, yeah, you know, they are good fun. They do add something a little bit different. Please, at some point though, allow the F2 2024 grid to make their way to Formula 1. I know what they'll say. It'll be, oh, well, you know, they're racing in Formula 2 and the season's on and things like that. But it's just so much better than suddenly having, like, you know, if we're kind of into early next year, you know, we're already in 2025, and, like, some F2 driver that did nothing in real life 2023 is then suddenly getting a Formula 1 gig. And you're kind of there going, this guy's racing in, like, Formula 4 Japan or something like that now. Why on earth has he suddenly got an F1 seat inside the game? I really do wish, yeah, they kind of implement these drivers into career mode rather than last season. You know, Paul Aaron, someone like that. It'd be really cool to see how well he'd get on in a Formula 1 car inside this game. And Obviously, especially with Formula 2 where the driver lineups do change so often uh, between seasons. You know, it is a little bit of a shame that we kind of don't get that update as well. And... Yeah, it's, yeah I, I feel like it would surely just be like a database edit or something like that. You know, clearly all of the names are in the game as well. Uh, you know, wait, if you've got Alex Jake's commentary, I guess. Maybe not uh, with Crofty there. But yeah, it's just those little kind of things that give it 
a bit more legitimacy as well. You know, people might actually want to race the F2, you know, the up-to-date F2 cars a bit more if they kind of see, like, a new driver that's come up from Formula 2. And, you know, maybe maybe then they go, oh, I wonder what their car looked like in Formula 2. I wonder what number they were in Formula 2, that kind of thing. Or which team they raced for, things like that as well. But it doesn't seem to be the case, annoyingly. But as we make our way around this final lap, we've had plenty to talk about as this race has gone on. Once again, I feel like with the F2 cars, they're pretty good. They just need a couple of little tweaks and changes, like I said. Whether I've got to try and change my tyre pressures or something like that, or whether the ride height's too low, hence why they're a bit unpredictable through the bus stop. I don't quite know. Uh, but yeah, we will figure that out. I think, though, it's going to be Dennis Hauger that looks like he's going to take the victory in this race that out over the start finish line then i think it is yeah dennis hauger for mp that is going to take the win something he hasn't done a lot of in real life formula 2 this year but through the final corner from the back of the grid it's only p19 that was good fun though as we rip the wheel off over the line a super performance and victory for dennis hauger those fastest laps really count towards the end of the year, you know. The extra points for them start totting up, and that's how these drivers become champions at this level. And look at that. They're making their way out onto the podium now. Great race from the MP Motorsport team, and I'm very happy to see them up there on the top step of the podium. There we are then, taking a look at your final race results. Dennis Hauger takes the win there ahead of Victor Martins and Enzo Fittipaldi. So a good day for the Norwegian driver there. Behrman just beat out Antonelli, who, yeah, ended up less than two seconds off the win, but will only claim P5 there. Kushmini in sixth. Amory Cordiel, that needs to be changed. There's no way he'd be running up inside the top ten there. Ahead of Isaac Hadjar, Paul Aaron, Joshua Dirksen running out the top ten there. With Vashora ahead of Colapinto, Taylor Barnard, Juan Manuel Correa. And then further down the order, Bortoletto, Stanek, Villa Gomez, Maloney, myself, Marty Crawford. And yeah, Zach O'Sullivan with that ten second time penalty in the end there. It looks like our fastest lap as well was a pretty good representative, so... Yeah, I think we had the pace, just not quite the consistency against the AI as well. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure to leave a like, get yourself subscribed. Like I said, check out the poll as well over on the community tab uh, and have your say on who you'd like to see us race uh, in our F224 career mode as well there. But yeah, we'll be back very soon with more Formula 1 content.